Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. The impeachment trial for Texas Attorney General continues today. Coming up next, what the first witness in the trial is saying about Paxton's actions so far. Plus, now that kids are back in school, what health authorities are saying about a new COVID-19 booster that's expected to be out as early as next week. Outside with live cam and the hunt is on. We're looking for clouds today because that seems to be the only thing that keeps the temperatures down. Or at least you get a shade <laughs> spot here and there. Good morning. to get this Wednesday. It is September 6th. Thanks for joining us. We hope you had a good week so far. A lot of people had Monday off, uh, so it might be a short week for some people, but still hot. Still yeah. a hot short week. Yeah, and don't count on many clouds. I mean, well, there's darn. a few of them out there right now. We'll have one or two like the past few days, but really throughout the rest of the week, then we'll be seeing even more sunshine and it just gets hotter throughout the rest of the week. We are still looking at uh, some subtle changes by next week, so that's encouraging. There you can see the clouds that have already started to uh, show up over there looking out past the airport right now. 81, boy, it's almost like uh, cut and paste from yesterday at this time, although the humidity is up somewhat even compared to yesterday. We've got these dew points up in the 75, 76, 77 degree range, which, yeah, that's just wet towel when you step outside. So heat index readings, 85 Castorville, 87 Stinson, as well as uh, Canyon Lake and 89 down the road in Pleasanton. Light amounts of all the allergens out there. Update account later on. It is a, uh, beg your pardon, it is going to be a yellow day today. I didn't get that graphic updated. I will change that for you. And we do have a heat advisory in effect to later on today up until seven o'clock tonight for the eastern half of our area. Again, because those temperatures are going to be up there in the low hundreds and we'll still have enough humidity kind of hanging around here. 80 this morning, a couple of clouds hanging around here. 102. That's going to tie the record for today. And we're going to be, like I said, as hot or even hotter the rest of the week. We'll talk about next week and those subtle changes coming up that do include some rain and do include slightly lower temperatures. Details in just a couple of minutes. Steph, David. Thank you, Mike. And later today, the impeachment trial for Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton resumes. During the first day, which was yesterday, the first witness took the stand. Mr. Paxton has been entrusted with great power. Unfortunately, rather than rise to the occasion, he has revealed his true character. And as the overwhelming evidence will show, he is not fit to be the Attorney General for the state of Texas. This whole case is a whole lot of nothing. What happens here will have consequences no matter how it turns out. And with Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick presiding, the trial began after senators refused to dismiss the impeachment articles during pretrial motions. The first witness to take the stand for the prosecution was Jeff Mateer. He is Paxton's former second in command. He has also accused his former boss of committing crimes. The trial could go into next week. This morning, a new wave of COVID infections hitting home from the classroom to the White House. President Biden put on a mask in the public for the first time in months after the first lady tested positive for that virus. However, as ABC's Rihanna Ali reports, it didn't take long for him to ditch the mask during a Medal of Honor ceremony. This morning, a rising number of COVID cases sparking new concern just as students fill classrooms across the country. New York State is sending schools COVID tests and masks, and districts in Kentucky and Texas have briefly suspended in-person classes after a surge in cases. It's tough to say COVID is back when in reality it never really left. We're just much better prepared to deal with it. COVID hospitalizations nationwide have increased more than 15% in one week. Still, hospitalizations are only about half of what they were this time last year. A new booster shot, which is expected to protect against severe disease and death from a new variant, could be available soon. The FDA is expected to approve the booster within the next week, and the CDC is expected to soon follow. I think it's important for people to start viewing this almost like we view the influenza vaccine, where it's going to be tailored every fall to the best of scientists' ability to capture the dominating circulating strain. Doctors are also warning, don't throw out expired at-home testing kits because the FDA has extended when certain brands expire. The agency has posted a list of new expiration dates on its website. Meanwhile, some healthcare facilities in New York and California have now reinstated mask mandates as a precaution. President Biden showed up to a Medal of Honor ceremony wearing a mask yesterday, one day after the first lady tested positive. But 
He removed the mask while giving an award to an 81-year-old veteran. The White House says Biden has tested negative. Rhiannon Alley, ABC News, New York. The federal budget deficit expected to nearly double to $2 trillion for the 2023 fiscal year. That's according to a government watchdog group. The increase stems from a sharp decline in tax revenues and an increase in mandatory spending on Social Security, Medicare and interest payments. The growing deficit could also further complicate discussions over funding the federal agencies by the upcoming fiscal year starting October 1st. Congress will have until the end of the month to pass the spending package or short-term deal to keep the government operating. In Florida, police are investigating a tragedy that happened outside a church in Jacksonville Beach. A two-year-old girl was found dead inside a hot car. Investigators say the child was left in the vehicle in the church parking lot, and neighbors say most parents in the area have their children attend the church's preschool. Investigators say no one was detained or arrested following the child's death. Gary Wright, a singer-songwriter best known for the 1970s multi-platinum hits Dreamweaver and Love is Alive, died Monday. According to Wright's family, he'd suffered from Parkinson's disease and dementia for the last several years. Wright helped establish the synthesizer as a leading instrument in rock and pop music. He was a founding member of the UK-based band Spooky Tooth. He had several notable collaborations with musicians, including George Harrison of the Beatles. Wright was 80 years old. And time now is 436 and 80 degrees for now. Hey, believe it or not, fall is right around the corner and some stores are already giving out some of those big deals. Coming up next, the best deals you'll find this month. And a quick check of the roads with Trans Guy looking over at Loop 410 at Marbuck Road where things are looking good early this morning. So far, we don't see problems on this camera shot. And once again, outside with live cam, some clouds there this morning. Should be burning off. Going to be another one of those Clear sky, warm days. Gee, where have we seen that before? <laughs> Mike's got your forecast coming up. You may not be able to tell it by just walking outside, but we are headed into the fall shopping season. Yes, we are, and that means stores are discounting many other summer goods. 12 on your size, Marilyn Morris shows us the September sales on appliances, grills, and more. The holiday weekend may be gone, but the Labor Day sales, they're still on. Look for Labor Day sales on large appliances like refrigerators and washing machines. And then throughout the month, you'll also see a lot of sales around seasonal items. Consumer Reports tracks prices on its top rated products all year. So here's what to look for this month. This LG refrigerator is $1,166 at Appliances Connection. That's more than $260 off. This bottom freezer unit is energy efficient too. Here's another LG sale. This top loader washing machine is $798 at the Home Depot, Lowe's, and Wayfair. That's about $250 saved, and it's energy and water efficient. The dreaded ragweed season is coming, and air purifier may help. The Blue Air Blue Pure 211i Max is marked down to $280 at Best Buy. In testing, it did an excellent job removing dust and smoke. College football is back. Time to take your tailgate next level. This Weber Q is on a sizzling sale for about $273 at Amazon. And if you need a laptop for back to school, this 13-inch 2020 Apple MacBook Air is still $250 off at Amazon. You'll see the deepest discounts on tech closer to the holidays, but if you do need a new phone, Apple is expected to unveil its new iPhone next week, meaning the older models will start dropping in price. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Time now, 441 and 80 degrees for now. And coming up next, why convicted killer Alex Murdaugh is requesting a new trial. And constantly scrolling on smartphones is becoming more common for kids every day. Some experts say the practice is harming their brain function. However, up next, why a UT Health psychiatrist says social media isn't all bad. And welcome back. It's 444. New details this morning about a convicted killer, Alex Murdaugh's request for a new trial. ABC's Ariel Rochef has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, stunning new allegations in the South Carolina murder case that gripped the nation. The clerk of court 
had improper private communications with the jurors. The subject matter of those communications was the credibility of the defense. Attorneys for convicted killer Alec Murdoch alleging in a new court filing that his trial was tainted by bias, now calling for a new one. Lawyers for Murdoch, who was found guilty of fatally shooting his wife Maggie and son Paul, accusing court clerk Rebecca Hill of engaging in extensive, deliberate and self-interested jury tampering, claiming she advised jurors not to believe Murdoch's testimony. The question's going to be, is it true? Did she actually do this? And coming up at 7 a.m., George Stephanopoulos speaking with Alec Murdoch's attorneys in a morning interview. With your GMA First Look, I'm Ariel Reshef, ABC News. New York. TikTok brain, that is what some experts in medicine and education are calling a condition where kids who constantly consume 15 second entertainment cannot focus on long term communication. Courtney Friedman talked with a local psychiatrist who explains what parents can do about this. It's becoming more common for kids to spend much of their day scrolling, scrolling, and scrolling. Never ending bite sized videos that experts say are harming brain function, some calling it TikTok brain. Some studies have demonstrated that use of social media is associated with changes in the way that the brain functions and responds to social stimuli. UT Health psychiatrist Dr. Barbara Robles Ramamurthy says a lot of it has to do with social media algorithms. They are using scientific information about how our brain works to keep us coming back. And so some of those loops have to do with dopamine, which can be associated with addiction, for example. The issue is real for adults too, but the concern is higher for children whose brains are still developing. It even shows up in brain scans. The way that youth may respond to social cues or even expectations of social interactions. She said parents and teachers can look out for certain signs. If they cannot put their phone down for more than an hour without checking it, right? Or if it's impacting their ability to listen in lecture or if they cannot even have a phone conversation, then that might be a sign that it's time to take a break. She wants to clarify that social media isn't all negative. There are some very special, important aspects that it brings to our lives. And so it's a matter of balancing these out. Robles Ramamurthy tells parents to have ongoing conversations with your kids about how social media can impact their lives. And when attention is an issue, set rules about putting the phone down. She also said adults should reflect about being good examples, see how much we're using our phone, our attention spans, and if we're being present at home. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. It's only, what, uh, 447, so let's check on traffic. Tell me there's no traffic. There is no traffic. That's good. That's a good sign. See, people ought to get up earlier and go to work earlier because there's like, we drove to work today, nothing. I mean, right. it was me and a couple of deer and maybe a car, too. Well, another plus about getting up early is not as hot. I say, I right. yeah. <laughs> but there's that valuable sleep. Yeah. Uh, we'll go to bed earlier. <laughs> <laughs> that's hard sometimes. Yeah, yeah th that's tough sometimes. So anyway, awesome. hey, um, once again, it is a, a yellow day as far as CPS Energy uh, Conservation. And you can always scan that QR code or even uh, go to their website and find out some uh, really you know, good little tips on conserving energy. And this will be another day when we have to. Oh, darn it. Our now had a really pretty picture there. Sorry about that. All right, we got a couple of clouds hanging around here right now this morning. Uh, even a few more than what we had at this time yesterday. 86 here in town is what it feels like. 89 Pleasanton, 87 at Canyon Lake. Got a fair amount of humidity out there this morning, even more so. A little bit up from yesterday. And we'll have those few morning clouds hanging around here. Hold fairly steady the next couple of hours. Make it up into the upper 80s. Already at the normal high, 92 degrees at noon. I'd like to just stop there, but add another 10, and we are going to make it up to 102 later on today. That's going to tie the record for uh, this date. And as far as the dew points, yes, they will drop down, as is usually the case later on this afternoon, but we'll still have a dew point 61, 62, just enough humidity out there to where the heat index is going to be slightly higher than what the actual uh, air temperature is, unlike what we had last week when those afternoon dew points were dropping down in the mid and even in some cases lower 50s. All right, got to jump ahead to the latter part of the weekend and the first part of next week because nothing's going to happen between now and then. But by Sunday, 
A couple of showers out there. This does not mean it's going to be definitely raining there, but at least the chance does exist. Putting about a 20% chance on it for Sunday. Slightly better chance on Monday and then even better chance on Tuesday in the overnight hours, Monday into Tuesday and through the day, about 30% chance for a couple of showers out there. And that will continue on into the afternoon on Tuesday and then on Wednesday. So what this basically is, is a front which is going to be lying in the area. Now, to kind of qualify this a little bit, a lot of time these early season fronts, the first ones that, that try and come through here, that models try and get going through here early in the season, tend to sometimes put on the brakes before they move down here. So as far as the temperatures are concerned, we'll still kind of, you know, this is not written in stone as of yet going into next week. Between now and weekend triple digits. So we'll continue to rack up those numbers. We're going to end up with 74, 75 days this year of triple digit readings. Then we get into Monday, Tuesday, 99 going for 95. I mean, there's some some computer models that are really going gangbusters as far as high temperatures middle of next week. Really? Yeah, being much, much lower than that, which hmm. again, you got to kind of take this with a grain of salt, though, those first fronts that move on through here. But as of right now, it will give us that chance for some rain, knock temperatures down just into the 90s closer to a normal high temperature by the middle part of next week so all good news yeah it, it is but again still a week away is you know these first fronts usually the the models are kind of like yeah come on yeah whip it on through here but <laughs> eh, you gotta you gotta don't get us all excited and then bring us down. I'm yeah, all excited now. I'm, I'm just giving you all the yeah. options. Reality? Messenger. Yeah. Just a messenger. Man. Sometimes reality <laughs> stinks. 451, 80 degrees. For the first time in almost five decades, a country song finishes on top of Billboard songs of the summer chart. Up next, how Morgan Wallace last night compares to previous hits. And here's some lottery numbers for you. Last night, pick three, six, two, three. Fireball is seven. Daily four, zero, five, one, seven, fireball is three. Cash five, six, 18, 19, 23, 28. And your Mega Millions, three, 43, 50, 51, 65, Mega Ball 13, Mega Plier two. Good luck. It is a first for a country music song. Plus, it's a big day for Freddie Mercury fans. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. I know that last night we lit the liquor talk. For the first time in almost 50 years, a country song finished on top of Billboard's Songs of the Summer chart. Morgan Wallen's Last Night defined the season, according to Billboard. The chart is based on streams, sales, airplay, and more from Memorial Day through Labor Day. You fill up my senses. The last country song to finish first, John Denver's Annie Song in 1974. You got a fast car. Luke Combs' Fast Car Cover was second this year, making it the first time country songs claim the top two spots. Calm Down from Rema and Selena Gomez finished third. So cool. Barbie just led the box office to its biggest summer since before the pandemic, and now it's coming to the small screen. Next Tuesday, it'll be available for sale and digital rental. But Barbie will continue to stay in theaters, including a special IMAX run later this month. Freddie Mercury fans, today's the day you've been saving for. Sotheby's is auctioning off a bunch of rare stuff belonging to the Queen frontman. Among the highlights, Mercury's Yamaha Baby Grand Piano, on which he wrote songs including Bohemian Rhapsody. That's expected to fetch two to three million pounds. There are also handwritten lyrics to Bohemian Rhapsody, We Are the Champions, and more. Money from the auction will be donated to the Mercury Phoenix Trust and the Elton John AIDS Foundation. And happy birthday today to Idris Elba, the DJ and Emmy-nominated actor is 51. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athenson, ABC News, Los Angeles. I think I've seen some of those handwritten notes. There's a story on one on, on the Bohemian Rhapsody. Oh, oh yeah. And it's fascinating to look at how these artists, how their brain works, and how they just start writing these lyrics down, and then they put it all. It's just, it's amazing. It starts off all over the place, yeah. and then you get a really big hit for years to come. Don't mess. But that stuff fetches a lot of money too. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Time now, 457 and 80 degrees for now. Six San Antonio police officers shot in five separate incidents in less than two weeks. Coming up next, what we know about the latest incident and why the police chief is getting more and more upset. 
And a federal judge has sentenced a former Proud Boys leader to 22 years in prison in connection with the Capitol riots. Up next, how the Justice Department is trying to put former President Trump on trial at the same courthouse. And once again, outside with the roads, there's, uh, there's some flashing lights on the side of the road that there at I-10 and Old Pearsall. Doesn't look like much is happening there because there's really not much traffic right now. Stephen Cavazos is here. He'll get us up to date on everything you need to know before you hit the road this morning. Coming up, you're watching Good Morning San Antonio. Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. The former Proud Boys leader Enrique Tario is now sentenced to 22 years in prison. He was in the courthouse, the same one that former President Trump will be facing his federal election interference case next year. The details coming up. And here at home, looking out there with live cam, yeah, 80 degrees, not too bad out there this morning, but we are expecting things to heat up once again. And good morning, it is Wednesday. It is September 6th, and you know what's great about today? It's Wednesday? Oh, there's a yeah. lot of things great. Hump day. Oh, okay, I thought you were gonna or, say, uh, we're gonna do science with Sarah. <laughs> well, science with Sarah day too. Also good. We're going to elementary school at nine o'clock today, so we'll be over there for that, but it's hump day. Yes, we look forward to it, and the week's when a lot of folks way. have off Monday, is today really a hump day then? For some people. Wednesday is okay. always hump day. Well, good point. So, all right, 81 degrees when you step outside. We are just about 10 above normal. Look at the bottom number there, 75 dew point temperature, which means it's really, really darn humid when you step outside. It's uh, it's kind of rainforest sort of humidity when you step out there. 102 for a high temperature today. We are going to be 10 above normal this afternoon. So our streak of triple digits or the tally of triple digits, I should say, does continue. The aquifer, big hit down eight tenths of a foot and the allergens got a whole bunch of light stuff across the board. Mold, ragweed, as well as pigweed. Got somewhat of a heat index to deal with when you step outside this morning. 87 is what it feels like out there at the uh, airport right now. Same thing, Castroville and right down there. Oh, just about Pleasanton. It's getting up in the upper 80s, close to 90 as far as the, uh, the heat index, mid 70s in parts of the Hill Country. Heat advisory goes into effect at noon up until 7 o'clock tonight for the eastern half of our area because, yes, the humidity will drop down somewhat, but not as dry as what we were seeing late last week in the afternoon. So that 102 is going to feel warmer than that, especially off to the east. So couple of clouds already this morning with plenty of humidity out there, plenty of sunshine, more triple digits, more triple digits the rest of the week. As a matter of fact, we are going to be getting hotter and peaking with temperatures on Friday and still we're going to be seeing hundreds through the weekend. Then really starting Sunday late, but better chance of Monday, especially Tuesday. We are going to have a couple of showers around here and we are going to see some lower temperatures. Will we get down close to a normal low, which is low 90s now? Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Good morning, sir. What's going on? Well, flashing lights over here, Mike. Good morning, 90 at 410. This is just one of the spots that we're going to have to keep a close eye on throughout the morning. As we went to commercial break, David pointed out that we did have flashing lights also at 410 at Old Pier. Pearsall. Looks like that's some overnight work that should be wrapping up and the good news is there's not a lot of traffic so we're not spotting any, de any delays but it really does seem like we have a lot of crews out there still finishing the job so just make sure to move over or slow down. Let's get you to our map because one of the other areas that we saw again as we went to commercial break was right here at 410 eastbound at Old Pearsall Road. At one point one lane was blocked but looks like crews have already finished the job there and we should be seeing the work wrap up at 90 at 410 hopefully in the next few moments or so. But why look at the map does show the the roads are still very quiet this early in the morning. If you are traveling into San Antonio, it's pretty much the same story here. I-10 westbound is green from Seguin with 29 minutes at this hour, 33 minutes along 87 northbound if you are heading in from Lavernia, and it's about a 28 minute drive time for our friends down in Floresville. But let's get it back here. 90 at 410. We'll keep a close eye on this and have another update, but don't forget there are more closures on the way and you may have noticed some along Loop 1604. I'll have more updates on that project coming up a little bit later on. David. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio police investigating why a man was stabbed in his apartment overnight. It happened just a couple of hours ago at 3 a.m. in the 300 block of East Cavallos. Police say the man and woman were fighting in the apartment when at some point the woman stabbed him in the leg. The woman was eventually arrested. SAPD says the man was taken to the hospital in critical condition. Six San Antonio police officers shot in five separate incidents in less than two weeks. John Paul Barajas takes us through the latest incident between suspects and officers. 
SWAT officers and San Antonio police units swarmed a southwest side neighborhood as they surrounded a wanted suspect who they say opened fire on an officer. I'm not scared, but it makes me uncomfortable. Like, really uncomfortable because you shot an officer in our backyard that's not even yours. Sofia Aguilar was on her way home when SAPD got her number from a neighbor and let her know a suspect barricaded himself in her backyard after being chased by police. As he was chasing him, he was ambushed. The suspect picked up a shotgun, from, saw it off shotgun from somewhere and hit the officer as he turned the corner. SAPD, the anti-gang unit, covert officers and others took the suspect into custody. In the end, one officer was hurt, no one else was injured. Aguilar is relieved she wasn't home during the chaos. Lucky because we were so tired this morning we were actually going to go to the shop and I looked at him and I was like, should we go? And then we were finally like, okay, let's go. But we weren't, we were so close to like, so close to not going. We are going to stay here. Like but Chief McManus was visibly upset as he spoke with media about today's incident, the fifth shooting altercation between a suspect and San Antonio police in the last 12 days. Chief McManus says today's suspect was wanted on two felony warrants. Those include aggravated assault and repeat violation of a protective order. As for the injured officer, that person was taken to the hospital for surgery. We confirmed that officer is in stable condition. John Paul Barajas, KSA 12 News. In each shooting case over the last few days, the San Antonio Police Chief raised concerns about the suspect's criminal history. On Monday night, the chief said the man killed by officers, quote, should have been in jail. Now, Bear County District Attorney Joe Gonzalez responded, saying the man was on parole when he was released from prison in May. So Gonzalez went on to say, quote, the decision to release him from prison was made by the Texas Board of Pardons and Paroles. Prior to last night, the offender did have a previous criminal history, but not a criminal history sufficient to hold him without bond. This morning, a man in his 40s is recovering from a brutal attack by some pit bulls. It happened yesterday before noon on Heidelberg Street. That's near Randolph Boulevard and Wiedner Road. The attendant police say the man in his 40s suffered extreme injuries to both arms and his torso. They say the man was in his yard when the dogs were let outside next door and managed to escape the fence, which led to that attack. Several neighbors jumped in to help get the dogs away from the victim. They say the dogs just wouldn't stop. I'm holding them dogs at bay with my pistol. And then the ambulance gets here and they didn't want to go in the yard because the dogs were still in my yard. So I'm telling them, I'm yelling at these guys, Get in here and get my buddy off the ground. He's bleeding to death. The pit bulls were taken by animal care services and are in quarantine for 10 days. Homicide investigators are looking to see if any criminal charges will be filed. This is the fifth dog mauling case that has reported since February. Former Proud Boys national chairman Enrique Torrio now sentenced to more than two decades behind bars. It's the longest sentence imposed thus far in connection with the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. As ABC's Enwin reports in court, Tario pleaded for leniency, calling January 6th a national embarrassment, though never taking responsibility. This morning, former Proud Boys leader Enrique Tario going to prison for 22 years after orchestrating his far-right extremist group's attack on the Capitol in a failed bid to thwart the transfer of power after Donald Trump lost the 2020 presidential election. It's the harshest sentence handed down among any of the more than 1,100 individuals charged so far in connection to January 6th. Prosecutors had asked for 33 years that they're getting pretty high sentences, I think sends a huge signal about the importance of uh, vindicating the harm that was caused on January 6th. Tario was not present at the riot, but prosecutors still say he played a key role, arguing Tario watched the violence unfold at 2.38 p.m. posting on social media, don't expletive leave. This now infamous video showing Tario meeting with Oath Keepers leader Stuart Rose and others in an underground D.C. parking garage on the eve of the riot. Rhodes now serving 18 years behind bars. Tario's sentencing comes days after those of other former Proud Boys members who were also convicted of seditious conspiracy. Ethan Nordeen received 18 years, Joseph Biggs 17 years and Zachary Rail 15 years. There'll be a day and a time where an appeal will come, and we expect that the appeal to come soon. This as the Justice Department prepares to put former President Trump on trial at the same courthouse in Washington on charges that he illegally schemed to overturn the 2020 presidential election results.
Trump's federal election interference case is set for March 4th, 2024, despite his attorney's efforts to push it back until after the presidential election. It'll come one day before Super Tuesday. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. And the time now is 510 and it's about 80 degrees out there. You tired of all those expensive Mac products? Just ahead, what Apple is saying so far about a less expensive MacBook that could compete with Google. Keeping kids in class is a top priority in San Antonio. Up next, what's being done to accomplish that goal at a time where truancy is at an all-time high. And once again, with live cam, there's a few clouds out there right now. They'll probably burn off today. We'll be looking for them later on this afternoon. Where'd they go? We need a cloud. <laughs> on vacation. Because that 80 degrees is going to change, too. As the sun comes up. Mike, catch your forecast. Coming up, you're watching Good Morning San Antonio. The San Antonio Municipal Court is teaming up with Pre-K for SA to keep kids in class. That's why it launched the Attendance Matters campaign, and the goal is to provide families with resources to cut down on chronic absenteeism from some San Antonio schools. Now, a Texas Education Agency study says that's a major factor that contributes to increased dropout rates among students. Chronic absenteeism is not just a matter of missed days. It's a barrier to a child's future potential. Every day in school matters and every student's success matters. The Attendance Matters campaign has posts and other resources about their initiative on the San Antonio Municipal Court website. It's 514 and hanging in there at 80 degrees. Yes, hanging in long. there. <laughs> That's true. Just ahead, a first look at new plans by TikTok to build more social networking and private messaging features. And also coming up next, how the world's youngest video game developer is creating a fun but also educational game for kids. Imagine a world with no drama. I haven't signed Jody's card yet. At 4imprint, finding the promotional products you need to create a memorable moment is an easy mission. Our expert team will take care of every detail to make your success a certainty. Take the drama out of ordering promotional products at 4imprint.com. 4imprint, for certain. Want to leave works all day so I can keep working my magic. Just want to leave. 12 hours of uninterrupted pain relief. Aleve, who do you take it for? And for fast topical pain relief, try Aleve X. Hit the fun part. Came a long way. Came a long way. Came a long way. Been a long way. Been a long way. Been a long way. Are you kidding me? One of the night, baby. Today's Tech Bytes, a less expensive MacBook may soon be on the way. Reports say Apple is looking into producing a lower cost laptop to compete with Google's Chromebook. Chromebook sells for under $200, while MacBooks start at around $1,600. It appears TikTok is looking beyond the viral videos by possibly adding more social media features. Reports say TikTok posted several new jobs for positions involved in building social networking, along with improving private messaging features. And in the world of game developing, a child is attempting to lead them. Six-year-old Samar Kurana created an educational video game after taking a few coding classes. It teaches kids how to eat healthier. Guinness has confirmed she's the youngest game developer ever. As a young developer, I wonder if she's even into nature. After all, it's full of bugs. Those are your tech bites. Well, the bugs. <laughs> okay. Very funny. <laughs> Well, it looked pretty bare in the camera that I was looking yeah. at. <laughs> you know, we've been talking about the 1604 North Expansion Project. Yes. It's one of the biggest projects happening in our area. Remember, it's a billion dollar investment in increasing the mobility, reducing the congestion, but for a lot of drivers, it's still a headache to navigate. Mm -hmm. Just take a look at that construction that we have. This is uh, some drone video that we actually have of the ongoing construction. This is along 1604 near Northwest Military. This is just a portion of uh, 1604 that's under construction right now. If you're familiar with the area, there are at least three segments that are about 12 miles that are undergoing that construction. And that's uh, actually stretches from Bandera Road all the way to US 280. 
281. So yeah, pack your patience because we have plenty of road work taking place. Let's get it back here to our map. Now, as I mentioned, it's about 12 miles and we're going to have all three segments that are seeing some closures this week. And as a reminder, just make sure to pack patience. A lot of that is happening overnight. We did have some closures along here again, Bandera Road to I 10. That's just segment one. Remember, this is wrapping a portion of that at, at a portion at least on Monday, September 11th. This is all overnight, eight in the evening till five in the morning. We'll see the westbound frontage road full lane closure there from I 10 to John Peace Boulevard and Lock and Terra Parkway. A lot of text on your screen, but if you scan this QR code, it takes you directly to our KSAT traffic page. We have a full list of everything that's happening along Loop 1604, one of the busiest corridors in our area. I know it's a headache for you all to navigate right now, but uh, just again, pack that patience. The goal is to have this portion completed at least by 2027, Mike. That doesn't sound like it's too close by, but hey, uh, the uh, end game is what we're all looking for, right? Well, think about when they were doing all the construction of 410 years ago. That has been, yeah. what, 20, how many years now? Maybe almost 25? Since they did all that stuff? Yeah, so it's going to be here in the blink of an eye. All right, beautiful uh, sunset yesterday. We had a few clouds hanging around here, and we're going to have a few more, just one or two of them today. Yesterday, we racked up day number 69 of triple-digit temperatures, and we're going to continue to add to it day and then through the weekend. So we're looking at 74 days as uh, far as the forecast goes of triple digit temperatures going through Sunday. So we've got this doesn't show it too well, but a few of those clouds around there right now. We are in the mid 70s in the hill country, low 80s here in town. We stay 80 this morning and then with those few clouds warm up already up to 92 normal high at noon and we continue up at another 10 degrees to that 102. There will still be enough humidity left over to make that 102 feel like 104, 105, or even higher than that in a couple of spots. And so that's why we have some of those heat advisories posted. And all right, here's the upper level steering winds again. So the high is sitting basically on top of us, and it continues to be the dominant feature as it has been all summer long, basically, all the way through the end of the week. And this is why it gains a little strength. This is why we're going to be even hotter on Friday. Then it starts its retreat ever so slowly to the west and that's going to put us into more of a northwesterly flow coming around that high. So that's why we have a small chance for a couple of showers on Sunday and then as we continue into Monday and Tuesday and also this big trough up there in southern Canada, the Great Lakes, that's going to also kind of push that thing. So those troughs become much stronger as we get in, into September, obviously into the fall, and the high is going to weaken. So this is going to help to push a front in our direction. Now, a lot of times, some computer models, long-range models, get really, really uh, too encouraged about these fronts moving on through here, which one particular model does. It's got us very, very cool next week, which I'm not really buying into yet because a lot of times these things get to eh, north of us and sort of stop. But as of right now, that does give us the chance for uh, some showers as well as a couple of thunderstorms by the middle part of next week. Like I said, triple digits through the weekend, so we will continue to uh, rack them up there, like I said, up to 74 days by Sunday, then 99 Monday, Tuesday, 95, better chance of rain on Tuesday. Again, we just keep an eye on these fronts. Like I said, some long range computer models get a little anxious this time of year with those things moving on through here, but uh, it will be in the vicinity to give us more clouds and obviously knock temperatures down somewhat. Well, we're, we're all getting a little anxious. Yes, and hopeful. Yes. <laughs> and hopeful. Anxious, frustrated, tired. Okay. It's it gonna, continues, so. it's gonna happen. It'll happen. 523, 80 degrees. Up next, how the writer's strike in Hollywood is really starting to affect workers now after four months. Let's well, first look at a new Meg Ryan romantic comedy. The ongoing writer's strike in Hollywood having an increasing effect on the workers. CNN's David Daniel has that and more in today's Hollywood Minute. We want it now! When do we want it now? 
In July, Deadline quoted a studio executive as saying the studios plan to let the writers and actors strikes, quote, drag on until union members start losing their apartments and losing their houses. Now, four months into the WGA strike and nearly two months into the SAG after strike, that's happening, with missed mortgage payments and evictions becoming more common. That's despite assistance from multiple groups. One, the Entertainment Community Fund, says it's distributed more than $6 million to nearly 2,900 TV and film workers. One issue, many workers hadn't been able to rebuild their savings used up when the industry shut down during the pandemic. Have you been? Oh, for the last 20 years. 25, maybe. I've been 49 forever and ever and wow, ever. Wow, lucky you. I feel like I've been in my 50s since my 20s. <laughs> That's so true. Now, you don't have to agree with me. Meg Ryan and David Duchovny play long-ago exes snowed in together at a small airport in What Happens Later. Ryan also directed and co-wrote the Missed Connections rom-com, which opens in theaters November 3rd. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 527 and 80 degrees. The economic report shows that U.S. paychecks will keep rising higher than goods and that consumer spending will keep the country's economic engine running. Up next, why some lawmakers in Washington aren't that optimistic, especially with inflation still on the rise. Plus, we're going to look at how many student loan borrowers are already taking advantage of a brand new repayment plan that could reduce the monthly payment for millions of Americans. And did you happen to wake up this morning saying, man, I really want something spicy? Well, you are in luck if that's you. We're going to tell you about the new hot menu at Shake Shack. That's coming up. And also ahead on GMSA at 6, healthy eating is important for all of us, especially growing children. How San Antonio's WIC program is celebrating healthy eating this month. This morning, President Biden touting his optimistic view on the economy. They said millions would lose their jobs and the economy would collapse. But this president refused to let that happen. Coming up next, why some lawmakers aren't very confident in Biden's vision. And looking out there with live cam, we're 80 degrees. I was driving around yesterday with my umbrella, but not for the rain. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to use it for the sun. At least you're getting good use out of it. Your right, I am. It, it's getting a little faded, though, with all that sun we've been <laughs> having. <laughs> good morning. It's 531. Thanks for joining us. Happy it, Wednesday. It is hump day. Yes. Yeah. Regardless of whether you got the Monday off, it's still hump day. Okay. So some people didn't get Monday off. That's, That's true. true. A lot of people had to work through it. All right. You'll need an umbrella <laughs> for the sun to shade that for the next few days. But you may actually get kind of the legitimate use out of it. By next week so keep Ooh. your fingers crossed for that uh, we've got some clouds right now and temperature stands at a very balmy 81 degrees but 10 above normal and with that number at 75 the dew point measure moisture in the atmosphere that means it is humid when you step outside kind of fog up your glasses sort of uh, humidity 87 is what it feels like in town when you factor in all of that humidity 85 canyon lake and 88 right now at castroville we've got a light amount of mold pigweed ragweed update account comes out in a couple of hours heat advisory in the eastern half of our viewing area because the humidity will drop down this afternoon but not completely clearing on out like it did last week so 102 high temperature is going to feel more like 104 five in places even hotter than that close to 107 in some spots so that's why those uh, heat advisories are posted 92 at noon and again 102 for a high temperature later on today going to be dealing with this for the rest of the week actually getting hotter then we'll talk about using your umbrella for what it was made for that's coming up in just a couple of minutes traffic authority you were talking about some problems earlier last yeah time. a lot of overnight construction mike nothing that drivers should be worried about but always be on the lookout for any of those flashing lights out there those are crews working to improve our roadways so make sure to give them a break move over or slow down behind me we see some quiet roadways but things are picking up at 35 at fisher that trans guide camera went pretty fast we'll see if we can get it back on our screen but 90 at leon creek shouldn't be a problem for drivers that are heading out the door and getting the commute rolling this early in the morning. As we get you to our map, it's off to a quiet start here. As David's pointing out, it's hump day, but no bumps in the road over here. So that's great to report. But if you're going to be traveling into town, just take your time. Again, no need to rush because things are quiet. Pleasant, actually, if you're heading in along 37 northbound from Pleasanton, we have about a 27 minute commute for drivers this early in the morning. Right now, US 90 eastbound, if you are heading in from Castroville, expect about a 28 minute drive time. Not too bad at this hour. And of 
Oakland, uh, and, and we'll look at 35 northbound heading in from Lytle. Should be about 16 minutes if you are hitting the roads and heading into the Alamo City. But let's get it back here on Transguide 1604 at Bandera. We have plenty of other road closures taking place. We'll take a look at that and get you in, in the know before you have to go coming up in the next few minutes. Steph? Thank you, Stephen. San Antonio's police chief has released more information about a man who officers shot and killed earlier this week. That man, who police say was armed with a gun, was killed on the southeast side of town on Monday evening. Our Katrina Weber is live downtown with an update. We know one new detail released is the man's name. Well, that's right. He's been identified as 27-year-old Jacob Strig, someone who we're told was on parole at the time when he was killed. Now, we covered that story. We were there and had the story of the shooting when it happened after 6 Monday evening. Police Chief William McManus told news crews at the time that String is someone who officers had been following in connection with a couple of robberies earlier in the day. He said when officers approached him near Prestwick and East South Cross, String pulled a gun from his waistband, pointed it at the officers, and may have fired at them. Well, yesterday he corrected that, saying that although String pointed the gun at officers, he never pulled the trigger. Officers, though, shot and killed String. In addition to being a suspect in the robbery, String, according to records, did, did have a lengthy criminal history. Well, McManus described him as someone who should have been in jail. However, in a lengthy statement, the district attorney, Joe Gonzalez, pushed back on that idea, saying that String was on parole after being released from prison back in May. Also in the statement, it went into detail about uh, String's criminal background, including why and how he was let out of prison. And you can read more about that statement, read it in its entirety in the story on our website, ksat.com. Reporting live downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Economic analysts are breathing a sigh of relief this morning, at least for now. A new report from Goldman Sachs has an optimistic view about the U.S. economy over the next year. However, as CNN's John Lawrence reports, the Bloomberg consensus, consensus is that the U.S. has a 60% chance of recession and the federal budget deficit is expected to nearly double to $2 trillion this year. President Joe Biden's campaign is debuting a new ad Thursday during the National Football League's season opener. They said millions would lose their jobs and the economy would collapse. But this president refused to let that happen. The 30-second video called Got to Work comes on the heels of a report from Goldman Sachs that says the odds of a U.S. recession over the next 12 months are now down to 15 percent, which falls in line with the historical average for any year. Inflation is still high, but it is moderating here uh, nicely, quickly moving in the right direction. All the trend lines look good, uh, getting inflation back to the Federal Reserve's target. Goldman Sachs officials are calling this a soft landing, which means bringing down inflation without an economic collapse. It adds that U.S. paychecks will keep rising higher than goods and that consumer spending will keep the country's economic engine running. There's still a script to be written here and things could go wrong, but at this point, they feel the Fed feels like it's uh, threading the needle just right. As of now, the Federal Reserve has only been able to accomplish that feat once in the past 60 years. And some Republicans aren't as confident in Bidenomics. Part of the inflation problem is the Biden, you know, $1.2 trillion of Green New Deal spending called the Inflation Reduction Act was actually inflation creation. I'm John Lawrence reporting. More than 4 million people have enrolled in President Biden's new SAVE plan. The repayment plan promises to lower monthly bills as student loan payments are set to resume in October after a years-long pandemic-related pause. It's available to most people with federal student loans and can provide significant relief to borrowers struggling to pay off their student loan debt. Interest began accruing on federal student loans on September 1st for the first time since March 2020. Biden proposed canceling up to $20,000 in student loan debt for low and middle income borrowers before payments restarted, but the program was struck down by the Supreme Court late June. 
A federal judge has ordered two firearms companies to stop selling device that could turn an AR-15 style gun into machine guns. Now the accessory is marketed as the FRT-15. It effectively converts certain legal semi-automatic firearms into automatic weapons, which are not legal. The judge ruled rare breed triggers and rare breed firearms never got ATF classification for the device and told customers it was legal. ATF classification is not necessary, but if manufacturers don't get it, the judge wrote, they can be held liable if the device turns out to be against the law. Elon Musk threatening to file a defamation lawsuit against the Anti-Defamation League. Musk claims the nonprofit group statements about rising hate speech on X, formerly known as Twitter, have torpedoed the social media platform's advertising revenue. In a post, Musk said U.S. advertising revenue is, quote, still down 60 percent, primarily due to pressure on advertisers by ADL, end quote. The ADL and the Center for Countering Digital Hate say the volume of hate speech on X has grown under Musk's stewardship. Time now is 539 and 80 degrees per now. If you are looking to fly to your destination in the near future, coming up next, why fall fares could finally be getting cheaper. And things are getting spicy at the Shake Shack. Up next, we're going to show you what on its new menu. It's the hot menu. And outside with live cam. Still hanging under 80 degrees. The temperature hadn't moved much. You know, I, what would have been nice if it had been 79? Because that would have been like a mental thing, right? <laughs> or Look, it's 79 degrees, but no. 75. I'll take 75. 75. Even better. Just one degree left. <laughs> Welcome back. It's 543 in your morning consumer headlines. If you're tired of sky high prices of air travel, you're not alone, but relief is on the way. End of summer discount fares, which disappeared over the past few years, are making a comeback. So according to an analysis from the travel app Hopper, the lowest airline prices going into fall are cheaper than they were previously. The analysis found fall fares are 9% less expensive than last year and 10% cheaper than in 2019. Ticket prices for September and October are 29% less expensive than the average prices for peak domestic summer travel. Shake Shack spicing things up with its new hot menu. The slate of new items includes the Shake Shack's hot chicken sandwich. This is the fourth time Shake Shack has brought that sandwich back. The nationwide hot menu launch also includes a new spicy Shakemeister burger, spicy fries, spicy cheese fries. The hot chicken sandwich and spicy Shakemeister burger will launch on Friday. Fast food franchises have been fighting for chicken sandwich market share since 2019. That's when Popeyes challenged Chick-fil-A with a spicy sandwich with McDonald's, KFC, and Burger King soon following. Everybody's got a chicken sandwich now. We have options. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> that's a lot of them. Time now, 544 and 80 degrees for now. It is Wednesday, and that means this little pet is paying us a visit. The Animal Defense League is next. Well, Nadia's here from the Animal Defense League and another just adorable little kitty. Who's this one? This is Sloth, and she's four months old, and as you can tell, really calm and curious. Oh, and yeah, just, I mean, for being this young and for being this kind of, like you said, calm, especially in TV studio, mm -hmm. is amazing. She's got the most beautiful green eyes and just somebody to cuddle up with. So you got a great, uh, great event going on here. Yes, we have our free vaccination um, events that are coming up every other week in September. So on the 16th is our no next one at Dawson Park. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to get there early. We serve 100 pets and again, free vaccinations and free microchips. Um, so it's a great way to just reduce disease in the community. Uh, obviously, we want to encourage that, uh, especially when we get strays or any animals from public intake, the less likely that they are sick, yeah. the better. So okay. they're ready for adoption. Well, if you'd like more uh, information about that and Little Sloth, the name is hilarious there. And they can always use, you know, their Amazon wish list. So head on over to 11th Grand in Nacogdoches or the Paul Jolly Center uh, across from the zoo, PetSmart or ADLTexas.org. Thank you, dear. And eating the right foods is vital to living a healthy life. Texas WIC is emphasizing the importance of eating all types of food throughout the day. So they have this plate called the portion plate. It recommends your child's plate being half fruits and vegetables and half grains and protein. As long as you're meeting these different food groups at each meal or throughout the day, um, that's pretty much the key to a healthy diet. 
Good reminder there, Texas WIC offers both children and adult portion plates. Also giving kids multiple options will help them feel like they are making a decision for themselves. Like the faces on the bread. Yeah, it makes it more fun. It's pretty good. Yeah. What's not fun is there's some flashing lights out there. Yeah, that's never a good sign, right, David? But uh, we are taking a look there at Transguide, and you can see him off in the distance. This is actually something that I've been keeping a very close eye on throughout the morning. We do have paving work, and it does exceed. It does look like that those crews out there are experiencing some sort of delay. This should have wrapped at five this morning, and obviously we're inching closer to six a.m. So we'll find out what's going on there and when this will exactly wrap up. But in the meantime, just be on the lookout as we get closer to that busy time. We are starting to see a few more issues out there on the roadways. Thirty-five southbound at Loop Four Ten. That inner change there. We do have a salt vehicle and it's causing a bit of a backup there along 35. So just be on the lookout there and anytime you see those flashing lights, you know what to do. Move over or slow down. Now the wide look at the map does show that we're off to a pretty much quiet start for the majority of San Antonio. But as I mentioned, this paving work it was should have wrapped at five this morning. It's been current for a little while, but uh, again, uh, the work will take place all the way up until September 8th, 830 in the evening and five in the morning. We will see those alternating eastbound main lane closures from Spring Springvale Drive to Leon Creek Bridge, but you could always head over to ksat.com slash traffic for a full list of all the closures. Just don't forget anytime you see those flashing lights, just give those crews a break out there. They are working to improve the roadways and I'll get on the phone with our friends at Transguide here in the next few moments. Find out what the delay is, but watch out. We will and watch out for the heat. Yeah, it's going to stay triple digits all the way through the rest of the week, but there is hope down the road, so Good. we are, are keeping our fingers crossed for that. I love this picture and uh, don't know what that is, but I do know it is very pretty. That's gorgeous looking. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. Very jealous of your uh, your garden right there. All right, we got some clouds already starting off this morning. Quick check of the uh, tropics. We do have a new tropical storm way out in the middle of the Atlantic. It is tropical storm Lee, 65 mile per hour winds. It is working its way just about straight to the northwest. It is forecast to become a very, very strong major hurricane as a category four storm. Uh, it's going to just scooch past the uh, Lesser Antilles and right there just to the north of Puerto Rico. Obviously, it's going to be kicking up a lot of surf and then the long, long range forecast does have this kind of making a turn up there. So obviously the eastern seaboard is going to be keeping an eye on that going into next week. But as of right now, like I said, it looks like it is going to take more of a turn up to the north. Our temperatures are going to continue to warm up through the 80s this morning, 92 at noon. That's the normal high, the average, then add 10 to that. So 102 high temperature later on today, and it will feel hotter than that because of the humidity, which will drop down somewhat, but still enough out there to give us that that heat index later on today. So yeah, it's going to be it's going to be pretty warm. All right, here's the computer model jumping ahead to Sunday. A couple of extra clouds hanging around here because we're not going to have anything between now and then. And we start to see one or two, at least the chance for a stray shower to pop up maybe later on Sunday. Better chance on Monday and then especially going into Tuesday as well as on Wednesday. Now, it's, it's not written in stone, but like I said, as time goes on into the middle part of next week, better chance. This doesn't mean that it's going to rain everywhere. It's just this is the opportunity for it. And again, the reason is we're going to start to see somewhat of a shift in, in the weather pattern. Now, one thing, kind of the qualifier with this, a lot of times long range computer models do get really anxious to bring that early season front on through here on into the area. So we'll definitely keep an eye on that. But as of right now, the chance for a couple of showers, especially going to the middle part of next week, temperatures will finally be dropping down closer to normal. But of course, until then, all the way through Sunday, it's going to be more triple digits. More after this. Coming up on GMA, we are following the breaking news overnight. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken in Ukraine this morning. Our foreign correspondent, Britt Clinette, is on the scene with the details. And this morning, the lawyers for convicted killer Alex Murdoch are calling for a new trial after accusing the clerk of court of jury tampering. They're going to join us with that and so much more on GMA. Here we go for Wednesday morning. Animal Care Services says San Antonio is seeing a surge in people calling about bats. So ACS is trying to clear up some common misconceptions about the flying mammal. Look for this article on our website for more, ksat.com. Also, take a look at that creature. Is that the chupacabra?
the image tweeted out by Manu Ginobili, of all people. The Spurs legend posted the picture of the hairless animal that was walking around his neighborhood. According to Animal Care Services, the animal is a coyote with mange. But as you can imagine, the tweet generated some pretty funny responses, and you can check all those out once again on our website at ksat.com. Ahead in our next hour of GMSA, frustration for San Antonio police after six officers shot in less than two weeks. We are breaking down what's happening and what the chief is saying about it. Plus, a man brutally attacked by dogs in his own yard. And now we're hearing from those who helped save his life. And as we go to break, there's a look at the U.S. 90 and 410. That's on the access road. Flashing lights still going on. Looks like some construction has been delayed for some reason. Stephen Cavazos has got all that information for you coming up. You're watching Good Morning San Antonio. We'll be right back. This morning on GMSA, if you have to go to the driver's license office, don't do it. We'll tell you why and what it has to do with Labor Day weekend. Plus, people just don't know how it feels to be accused of something you didn't do. A man in New York is out of prison almost 50 years after he was wrongfully convicted of a felony. How he was proven innocent in a historic case. And outside with live cam system clouds hanging around and it's still going to be hot and humid again today. Those clouds are going to burn off. It's going to be a beautiful, sunshiny day here in South Texas. Can't wait. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Rise and shine at 6 a.m. and it's Wednesday morning. So you try to put a little positive spin on it. It's going to be yeah. a beautiful day today. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful, sunny yeah. sky. Yeah. adjective. What? Hot. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be positive. Beautiful yeah. day today. Yes, beautiful, sunshiny, hot Hi. day today. So we've got some clouds around this right. morning, as uh, David mentioned, and temperature stands at 81. Been holding pretty steady the past couple of hours all around, thanks to the extra humidity, because these numbers are even higher than what they were yesterday, dew point temperatures. And we've got dew points of 70s in the Hill Country, but 75, 77 there, Pleasanton and Randolph, that is just Again, tropical kind of humidity out there. So heat index 87 at the airport, 88 Castroville, 89 down the road at Pleasanton. Light amounts of mold, pigweed, ragweed. The updated count comes out about 730 or so this morning. Uh, speaking of a hot day, we do have heat advisories going to affect at noon up until 7 o'clock tonight for the eastern half of our area because not only will we have temperatures that are going to be getting up into the low hundreds today, we'll be at 92 at noon, which is the normal high, and then top off at 102, but we'll have just enough humidity left over to then make that 102 feel like 104, 105, 6 or so, uh, depending on where you live, and that's primarily in the eastern half of our area, so it will reach that heat advisory criteria. Stays hot, gets hotter actually before the uh, work week ends. Then we're talking about next week and some subtle changes overall. We'll take a look at that, talk about the rain chances there and what temperatures are going to be doing as well. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, had some hiccups and issues here. Yeah, so it looks like we are starting to run into some some issues are bumps out on the roadway, uh, Mike. As we see here, these flashing lights, 90 at 410. I talked to our friends at Transcribe. They're going to go ahead and uh, try to find out exactly what's going on here. But it does look like we may see some delay for crews that are out there that are working just to fix the roadways and make sure that you can have a safe commute. But make sure to watch out for them so they can get their job done safely. So very dark outside. We'll find out exactly what the holdup is, but it does look like traffic is starting to move through there at 410 and 90. Giving you a look over here at uh, 35. We do have a stall vehicle still reported at that interchange near Loop 410. Still have that delay as well. So folks that are heading down to that interchange, just watch out. Make sure to move over or slow down anytime you see those flashing lights. Now, the wide view of the map right behind me is uh, shows some better news. We have a pretty quiet start for the majority of drivers out there. And the same goes if you're heading into San Antonio from any of these communities, especially that journey from Bernie. You can expect just about a 23 minute drive time along I-10 eastbound. And uh, no need to hurry if you're traveling in from Mulverde, at least this early. 281 southbound we have a 25 minute commute and not too awful from new Braunfels 27 minutes at this hour along I 35 southbound but I'll get it back here at 90 at 410 we'll keep a close eye on these flashing lights find out exactly when this will clear up but uh, we'll have more closures for you on the way coming up a little bit later on David thank you Stephen right now on KSAD.com, two sections of Broadway near downtown officially closed for the rest of the year for construction Broadway from 4th Street to McCullough Avenue and 6th Street to Brooklyn closed through December. People will still have access to businesses along 
and near Broadway, and pedestrians will still have access to existing sidewalks on both sides. This is the next phase of the 2017 Lower Broadway Bond Project. New this morning, San Antonio police are investigating why a man was stabbed in his apartment overnight. It happened about 3 a.m. in the 300 block of East Ceballos. That is just south of downtown. Police say the man and a woman were fighting in that apartment when at some point she stabbed him in the leg. That woman was eventually arrested and police tell us that the man was taken to the hospital in critical condition. And looking ahead, budget work continues this week for the city of San Antonio and Bear County. Both governments are scheduled to approve their 2024 budgets next week. San Antonio voters can still have their say on the city's $3.7 billion budget proposal. The city is going to host a public hearing tomorrow morning at 9 in council chambers. The final vote on the 2024 budget is scheduled for Thursday, September 14th. The Bear County commissioners will also hold their next budget workshop meeting later today. If you have an appointment at a driver's license office for this Wednesday morning, don't show up for it. The Texas Department of Public Safety has canceled all driver's license appointments statewide between 7.30 a.m. and noon due to an ongoing outage with the driver's license system. DPS tells us it's working to identify the issue that's causing the problem since the agency started updating the system over the Labor Day weekend. Top of your morning headlines, the urgent manhunt for escaped murder Danilo Cavalcante entering its seventh day in Pennsylvania. There's new reports of footprints in a forest area around Philadelphia. The possible clue is just a few miles from where these trail cameras captured images of him near a sprawling botanical attraction. Police say Cavalcante slipped through a nearby perimeter and believe he is still lurking nearby. We realized within just a few hours uh, where he was and so he's not had a tremendous amount of time to uh, to move a long distance. Officials still aren't saying how the man may have broken out of prison, but Philadelphia Inquirer reports a source inside the prison says Cavalcante climbed onto the roof from the exercise yard, then ran across the roof, dropped down to a less secure area, fleeing the prison grounds from there. This was nearly identical to how a previous prisoner escaped only a few months ago. A New York man has been fully exonerated nearly 50 years after he was wrongfully convicted of rape. As ABC's Andrea Fuji reports, he was finally proven innocent thanks to DNA testing that didn't exist in the 70s. This morning, DNA testing has finally cleared a 72-year-old man of a rape conviction from nearly five decades ago, the longest conviction in the U.S. ever to be overturned by DNA evidence. It's been a hard fight. <laughs> But I thank God that this day is here. In 1976, Leonard Mack was convicted of tying up two high school students in Westchester County, New York, and raping one of them. Witnesses identified Mack as the suspect, but the police tactics proved to be unreliable. Investigators changed Mack's clothing to match the suspect's description, and Mack's picture was the only black man included in a photo lineup. People just don't know how it feels to be accused of something you didn't do. Despite the former Vietnam veteran maintaining his innocence, Mack served his seven and a half year sentence. Behind bars, he tried to challenge his conviction, but the DA's office at the time repeatedly rejected his efforts. It wasn't until the Innocence Project recently took up his case, partnering with the DA's office and used a method not available at the time of trial, DNA evidence testing. Those results cleared Mack and identified the real suspect, a convicted sex offender who confessed to the crime. While the wrongfully convicted and sit behind bars, the actual perpetrators are free to commit additional crimes. In court, Mack tearfully explained how painful it's been to live with the stigma of his conviction. The judge, stepping off the bench to hug Mack, said vacating his sentence has been the honor of her career. Now I can truly say that I'm free. It was Leonard Mack's birthday yesterday, the day his conviction was overturned. He said that was the best present he could have ever hoped for. As for the real criminal, he's already in custody for a separate crime. Andrea Fujii, ABC News, New York. In other headlines this morning, the world's third largest airline issued an hour-long ground stop Tuesday afternoon. An alert was issued by the FAA that United Airlines was delaying all flights nationwide due to, quote, an equipment outage, end quote. The ground stop was lifted over an hour later. The latest numbers from the tracking site Flightware showed that United has delayed hundreds of flights and canceled 14 as a result. United spokesperson says a software update was to blame.
And four months into the WGA strike and nearly two months into the South After strike, people in Hollywood are now starting to lose their apartments and houses. It is due to missed mortgage payments and evictions, despite assistance from multiple groups. The Entertainment Community Fund says it's distributed more than $6 million to nearly 2,900 TV and film workers. One issue being brought up is that many workers weren't able to rebuild their savings used up when the industry shut down during the pandemic. It is now 6.09 and 80 degrees. And still to come, do you worry about your kids spending too much time on TikTok? Well, it turns out your concerns are very valid. What local experts are saying about it. And coming up after the break, healthy eating is important for all of us, but especially growing children. How San Antonio's WIC program is celebrating healthy eating this month. And let's look out there with a live cam. 80 degrees, a normal start for a September morning, but yeah, expected to heat up once again this afternoon. But some hope off into the distance. We'll be talking to Mike about all of those hopes coming up.